In this video, we'll learn some of the basic features of Geometer Sketchpad. The most important thing to keep in mind is this set of tools on the left-hand side here. This is called the Toolbox. And the first tool, and probably most, the most important, is this little arrow tool up here called the Selection Tool. Now, we don't have anything on the screen to select yet, so let's skip ahead to the next tool, which is the Point Tool. So if I click the button, now you notice as I move my mouse around, I've got a little red point attached to my pointer. And if I click the mouse button, I put a point on the canvas. And every time I click, I make a new point, and I make a whole bunch of points here. Now let's go back to the selection tool. Now, if I click on one of these points, I am now selecting that point. And notice that the way that Geometer Sketchpad selects points is that when I click on something new to select, it adds that to what I have already selected. So right now, these three sort of purple glowing points here, I have all three of those points selected right now. If I want to deselect something, I can just click it again, or if I want to deselect everything, I simply click when I have the selection tool uh, chosen. I can simply click in empty space, and that will deselect everything. The next tool is the circle tool, or sometimes called the compass tool. So when I want to draw a circle, what I'll do is I'll click the mouse once. So I'm not holding the mouse button, I've just clicked it once. And now as I move it, notice that I have another point attached to my mouse, uh, attached to my arrow here. And as I move that point around, that defines a point that's on the circle. So the first time I clicked, I made the center of the circle. And now the second time I'm going to click, I'll go ahead and click now. So now I've constructed that circle. And the second point that I clicked was a point that was actually on the edge of the circle. If I go back to my selection tool, again, I'll deselect everything. If I try to move around the first point, notice that that doesn't move the second point. Right? I'm only moving the center of the circle, but I haven't moved the point that I chose on the circle. If instead I want to move the other point, then again the center is staying put, and what I'm doing is I'm changing where the second point was. So this circle is defined by these two points. Uh, sometimes we'll call this the parent-child relationship. The idea is that these two points are the parents of the circle. If I were to get rid of either of those two points, the circle would go away. So if I were to, to example, uh, select this point, I'm going to press the delete key. I know you can't see that, but I'm pressing the delete key. And notice that the circle and the point goes away, because the circle depended on that point. And once that point no longer existed, the circle no longer exists. OK, let's move on. The next tool is the line tool. Now, if you notice here, this is uh, the little picture on the tool looks like a line segment. And again, it's going to take two clicks. So I'm going to click once to start the segment. And then notice I've got a point attached to my arrow. And if I click again, I'll finish the segment. So that works in the same way. But if uh, this one, again, you might notice this little arrow down here in the bottom right corner of the tool. If I click and hold the tool, notice that there's other options here. So for example, I can make this double-headed arrow. That's going to be the line tool. Instead of creating a line segment, it's going to create an infinitely long line. So again, I'll click once, click again. And now notice that what I've done is created not just a line segment, but an actual uh, line that goes on forever in both directions. The other option here is the single arrow here, and that's going to give me a ray. So the first click gives me the starting point of the ray, and the second point gives me uh, the point that defines which direction the ray goes in. So a ray is like a line, but it just goes infinitely in one direction. Something else that's important to know, I'm going to go back to line segments here. Something else that's important is that if I want to create a line segment based on points that I've already drawn, I can do that. Notice I've got the line segment tool selected, and I'm going to hover over it. As soon as I get near one of these points, notice that that point kind of gets a little bigger. If I click my mouse now, the starting point of this line is going to be on that point that I just selected. So I'm going to click that, and now notice that I didn't make a new point. I'm starting my line at an existing point. And maybe I'll move it over here. And again, that point will glow nice and big. And now if I click my mouse a second time, now I've created a line segment that connects those two line segments together. And now if I drag this point around using my selection tool, I'm changing both line segments because this point is common to both of those line segments. Compare this to what would happen if I were to draw two separate line segments. So maybe a line segment here and a line segment here. If I then use my selection tool to try to drag these two things together, well, now it may look as if those two line segments are connected at that point, but if I try to drag one of them around, they're not actually attached. So the way to make two line segments be attached is to do that when you create them. So let me clean up my canvas here a little bit. I'm going to select a whole bunch of stuff and delete it. 
The next tool in line is the Polygon tool. And the way this one works is, again, it's a series of clicks. Instead of just two clicks, I'm going to click once, click twice, and now you notice that I've got a little uh, shape here. Let's say I'll click three times. Maybe I'm working on a pentagon, so I'll click four times, five times. And now if I clicked again, I would get another side. But let's say I'm done. I want this to be my shape. Well, now I have to go back to my original point and click a final time. And that will create this, uh, this uh, two-dimensional shape here, this pentagon. Again, I've got other options here, but the options with the polygon tool are uh, pretty simple. This second option just gives you a polygon with the segments around the outside. The one that I drew just has the interior, it doesn't have the segments around the outside. And this one would create a polygon without the uh, interior. Okay. Next in line we have the text tool. The text tool is used for two different purposes. One is to simply create a box of text, and this is useful when you're using Geometer Sketchpad to create proofs. So for example, if I double click here in open space, I could say, um, therefore, the triangle is equilateral. So maybe that's part of my proof. Now if I go back to my selection tool, I can move this text around. And on the bottom here, I've got a little text palette. I can make that text not be boldface, or I can make it italicized, and so on. I can also change the color of the text. Maybe I'll make it red, make it stand out. And then I can change the size of the text. For example, I can make it be much smaller or even larger. It was already pretty big, but I can make it even bigger. And I can even change the font. So the text tool is useful for that sort of thing. Another thing that the text tool is useful for is labeling some of these points and lines and circles and things that we're creating. So if I have the text tool selected, notice that I've got this little hand symbol. If I move that hand symbol over to one of the objects that I've created, it turns black. And that's your indication that if I now click the mouse button, what that will do is create a label for that object. So now you might be able to see it's a little small, but this point is now called A. If I want to make that label larger, I can select the object that it is labeling, and I get this text palette uh, to pop up again. And again, I can change the font size. I can change the text color. And I can do all those sorts of things. So labeling is useful, but so is creating these text boxes. The final tool that I want to talk about, I'm not going to talk about these last two tools, uh, but the final tool that I'm going to talk about is the marker tool. And the marker tool is used for a couple different things. One, which we're not going to use too often, but one thing that you can do with it is just simply do freehand drawing. So you can doodle on the screen. But probably the most useful thing that we can do is a couple of things. One is to mark certain objects that you've already created. So notice that the symbol uh, kind of looks like a highlighter maybe, and now it looks like a some different kind of pen. But when I move this over one of these line segments, if I click the button, now what happens is I get a little tick mark. And as you may remember from geometry class, those tick marks are useful if we wanted to show that, say, two line segments had the same length. We might use tick marks to show that. And then over here I can make another tick mark. If I wanted a double tick mark, I click the tick mark again. Triple, I get another one. And then quadruple. And if I click again, I get back to a single. So the marker tool is useful for that. It's also useful for drawing uh, angle marks. So if I go to a vertex of an angle, that's the point where the two line segments that form an angle come together. If I click my mouse button and drag it to the interior of the angle, I get this little arc, which is a nice way to indicate angles as well. And again, if I use my selection tool to drag these things around, all of those marks and symbols and things go with it. Similarly with the labels on the points, they all move with the objects that they're labeling. So those are the basics of Geometer Sketchpad. So take a, take a moment to open up a new Sketchpad window, draw some things, draw some shapes, practice with some of the tools that I've described, and then move on to the next video and learn some more advanced techniques.